The Boston Bruins are in Vancouver to begin a three-game Western Canadian road trip tonight against the Canucks. We're asking what is going on with Jake DeBrusque and other questions pressing about our Boston Bruins on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Let's get into it, shall we? You're Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Wednesday, December 8th, and this episode is brought to you by Primal Origin. If you have a beard, get Primal, stops the itch, and makes your beard look healthy and groomed. Check out PrimalOriginsOils.com to learn more about their full line of beard care products. Use code LOCKEDON for a 20% discount at checkout. I want to thank you all for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms. Uh, So please do smash that subscribe button, uh, download, listen, enjoy on a daily basis. And uh, the podcast is also available on YouTube. So you can get a peek into my living room, home office, Maybe check out Bessie the cat here and there. And uh, yeah, please subscribe there as well. We're up over 100 subscribers now and looking to continue to grow that. Uh, As I mentioned off the top, we're going to tee up tonight's game against the Vancouver Canucks, as well as answer answer, sorry, a bunch of mailbag questions that came in this morning uh, above and beyond when and where is Jake DeBrusque going to be traded, which I'll touch on here as well. But again, uh, as mentioned yesterday, uh, the Bruins are in Vancouver. Uh, They traveled without a couple of people that are key to the team, including head coach Bruce Cassidy, uh, as well as Thomas Nosek. Um, Bruce Cassidy still out with uh, COVID-19. Nosek stayed home with a non-COVID related illness. A few guys, um, are suffering from that illness as well uh, that did make the trip, uh, including Charlie Coyle, Matt Grizzlick, uh, Linus Ulmark. Uh, Charlie McAvoy missed Saturday's game with that illness, but he should be good to go. Uh, Anton Bleed uh, has also missed time with an upper body injury, and he made the trip as well. Uh, So no six stays behind. Uh, and Oscar Steen was recalled from Providence to accompany the team. He has six goals, seven assists for 13 points in 12 AHL games this season. He will be in the lineup, uh, say, if Bleed can't go, if Coyle can't go. Uh, he's been brought kind of as a, a stopgap measure in case one of the regulars can't go. But uh, as one of the bag questions uh, came in and asked, one was from our friend over in um, Sweden, I believe, Samuel Linde at Percuron, uh, asks, is Oscar Steen getting some much-deserved ice time during this road trip, or is he only along as insurance? I think uh, a bit of both, in fact. The Bruins have three games in four nights out west, uh, and I would imagine that uh, you know, there's always the possibility that someone will get will get banged up. This illness will flare up, and Steen uh, will get into one of these games at the very least. I would expect, and uh, yeah, hopefully he is given a chance to uh, to shine here after a promising start to his AHL season. One of the things we'll get to the Jake DeBrusque trade request here in a moment. Well, one of the things the Bruins do lack is. Uh, right-hand shot depth. You know, they have David Pasternak, uh, Craig Smith, Carson Kuhlman, Curtis Lazar, Charlie Coyle can play the right side as well, but they're really missing some depth there on the right side. Oscar Steen uh, can bring that, bring some energy, bring some offense, 
And I would really like to see him get an extended look at some point here this season as well. Another guy that didn't make the trip is Jakobs Borrell. He will be reevaluated in two weeks after an awkward collision in Nashville, forced him out with a lower body injury. Uh, as a result, John Moore is accompanying the team on this trip. Um, you know, uh, Matt Grizzlick may or may not play tonight because of this illness. Uh, so we could see Moore and Ashawn and Clifton in there, uh, along with McAvoy, Carlo, Forbort, uh, Grizzlick questionable as well. So, yeah, a lot of uh, things in flux because of this illness. Hopefully, you guys were able to travel okay and are feeling a bit better. Uh, the Bruins will have a quote-unquote morning skate uh, at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, so 2.30 this afternoon, and we'll get a bit more clarity on their situation at that point. Puck drop tonight is 6 p.m. local time, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time for those of us watching back in Boston or in the Eastern time zone. Uh, now, just want to quickly mention... Um, the Jake DeBrusque trade request situation. He, of course, remains with the team. He is penciled in. He was skating on the fourth line uh, last night, or sorry, in uh, in practice prior to leaving. And there's this player in a similar situation in San Jose that caused many people to question whether a deal might be there. That man is Kevin LeBanc. He's gone without a point in his last six games. He was scratched Tuesday uh, for one of the few times in his NHL career, according to uh, Curtis Pashelka of the Mercury News. Uh, he writes LeBanc, 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 25 in the second year of a four-year $18.9 million contract. He's played in the bottom six almost all season in Sunday's game against Columbus. A giveaway in the first period inside the Shark Zone led to a Blue Jackets goal. Uh, they lost 6-4. Uh, LeBanc finished with a season-low 10-25 of ice time. Uh, he played in 258 straight games from November 12, 2017 to April 24th of this year before uh, he had to miss some time because of a, an injury. He missed five games this season after he was placed on the NHL's COVID protocol, but this time it was a coach's decision. The first time in quite some time that he has been scratched. Uh, Bob Bugner, the Sharks head coach said he just needs to be better. Need more from him. Tried him on different lines. We want to play with a certain identity and everybody's got to be on the same page. It's not a bad thing. Once in a while, sitting back watching the game and um, if there's one thing that the Sharks are missing, according to the head coach, it's consistency. Now, I mean, the exact same thing can be said of Jake DeBrusque here in Boston. That's one of the reasons that uh, he had been scratched, that he'd fallen out of favor with um, Bruce Cassidy. Inconsistent, uh, not really getting the effort uh, defensively to make up for that. Uh, you know, he does have second line potential, I would say. He's got a right hand shot, which I just mentioned the Bruins uh, do covet for his career. Uh, he has a 0.51 point per game average, 65 goals, 118 assists in 358 career games, career high 17 goals, 56 points uh, two years ago or maybe three seasons ago, 2018, 2019 with San Jose. Uh, that was his most productive season, a 0 .068 um, point per game average. He was drafted in the sixth round back in 2014, 25 years old. And again, he is signed for two more seasons after this one at a cap hit of, uh, I believe it's four point uh, seven to five million. So more expensive than DeBrusque, but he's under control for a couple more years. Right hand shot, talented scorer, but like DeBrusque, uh, struggles in his own end and lacks consistency. I don't know. For me, it might be a bit of a pass. Um, I think the Bruins 
could do better. Um, and I'm still kind of holding out for uh, Dylan Strom, I think. Well, we'll get to what the Bruins need here in a moment uh, as we dig deeper into the mailbag. Uh, but first, another word about Primal Origin Oils Beard Care. If you or someone you care about has a beard, it needs to get primal. Maybe you're the guy who has never considered the benefits of treating your beard with product. I'm like that. I pretty much grow it out. And then once it gets itchy, I shave it. Primal Origin Oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. Their goal is to help others look good and live healthier lives through the use of natural oils. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients with a low impact on the planet. They make bombs, oils, whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel in beard products available. It's due to the exotic carrier blend with oils like raspberry seed, rose hip, and chia seed oil. Their products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA. Uh, I got some of their whipped butter, and again, it really helped reduce that itch. We know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils challenges you to compare their ingredients and feel and beard quality to the other companies you've used. We promise you'll see a difference. Remember to use promo code Locked On to get 20% off at PrimalOriginOils.com. Use promo code Locked On at checkout for 20% off at Primal Origin Oils. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market. And with the holidays coming up, there are so many flavors to choose from to uh, help you get through the holiday rush. If you're at the mall, you can easily pick one out of your pocket, get that energy boost you need to get all your shopping done, or they're great stock stocking stuffers as well. Tell Santa to throw a few Built Bars in the stockings. With so many flavors, they'd make anyone's Christmas morning a happy one. Bonus, I've tried this. It's amazing. Cozy up with something warm. Uh, dip your Built Bar into a piping hot cup of hot chocolate. Let it melt a little. Give your beverage a bit of that Built Bar flavor. And uh, it's truly delicious, especially with the marshmallowy uh, puff bars that they have currently available. Go to Built.com. See all the amazing flavors that you can choose from, put together a box, and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you again for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day, free and available on all podcast platforms, and uh, been very encouraged by recent growth in the podcast. It really means a lot that uh, people are listening, enjoying, uh, passing the word on to friends and family, fellow Bruins fans. And uh, I really uh, would love to see uh, 2022 be an even better year for the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. Let's dig into some more mailbag questions. Uh, you guys sent in a bunch this morning, and I really do appreciate that. The first one comes from a friend on Twitter, at MC Terzakis. Uh, she asks, any thoughts about why Chris Wagner is still languishing down in Providence? As a resident Chris Wagner stan, wondering whether he'll get a call back up. Uh, Wagner, he's played in 15 games for the Providence Bruins. He scored four goals, added an assist for five points. Uh, I believe he's getting some time on the power play, penalty kill, playing in all situations. And, you know, I just think it's his uh, cap hit that is prohibitive at the moment to have him up uh, at the NHL level, $1.35 million. And uh, I really do think, yeah, unless there's an emergency or they are really strapped for depth, on the right side, uh, we won't see him back up anytime soon. And that's been exemplified by Oscar Steen getting a look before him. I'd call Zach Sinishin up before him, to be honest. He's been on a bit of a roll down there uh, lately as well. And Wagner, I think, yeah, he's just kind of a victim of um, not being quite 
up to par as an NHL fourth liner uh, at this stage in his career. No disrespect to what he has accomplished with the Bruins in his career, uh, but he's 30 at this point, and there are just younger and better options. Um, you know, Oscar Steen, I mentioned, 13 points so far for the Bruins. Uh, Jesper Froden, he's got 12 points in 17 games for Providence. I'd like to see him get a look. Uh, Sinitian with 12 points in 17 games. Uh, these are guys that are younger and uh, probably uh, worth – more of a look above Chris Wagner. We kind of already know uh, what he is at this point. So unfortunately, friend, I don't see him coming up anytime soon. Uh, maybe in time for the playoffs for some veteran depth experience, but I'm not sure if he gives them uh, their best chance to win. Paul Simon at Paul Simon 126 asks, what would you rather get first, a top four left-hand defenseman or a uh, second-line center? This kind of goes in hand with a question from Kevin Smith. How long do you think Jack Ashawn stays with the big club? And if so, where do you think he pairs with when McAvoy and Grizz come back from illness? I would prioritize a center over a left-hand shot defenseman in part because of how good Jack Ashawn looked the other night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mentioned the other day his numbers were just off the charts against a very tough Tampa Bay Lightning opponent. Uh, shot attempts, shots, high danger opportunities tipped well in Boston's favor when he was on the ice. Uh, I would love to see McAvoy and Grizzlick stay together as a pairing. Uh, Ashan and Carlo, I think, could work together well. And then, you know, Forbort, Zborl, perhaps, uh, as the uh, the third pair. Um, who am I missing there? I can't remember if I'm missing one of the regulars there. But that would be a pretty tantalizing uh top six at the moment for the Boston Bruins. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's worth giving Jack Sean more of a look. Uh, of course, yeah, I left out Mike Riley there. He, um, between those seven defensemen, I think they might have something there. And uh, not really keen on giving Connor Clifton too much time or John Moore. Hopefully he can, you know, if he gets in some action here, with uh, some injuries on the back end or illnesses, maybe that will boost some trade value and we'll see if he can be, um, he can be flipped and uh, maybe added in a package with the brusque just to get his cap hit off of uh, the Bruins books. Got a couple more questions to answer, but first a quick word about bet online. They have you covered all season with more props, odds and lines than ever before. Football is marching towards the playoffs. Uh, Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today. Receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using promo code Locked On. From basketball, football, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. That's bet online where the game starts. So just to go back to that previous question, I think the top seven of Grizzly, McAvoy, uh, Ashawn, Riley, Carlo, Forbort, uh, Zborl could really do the trick for the Boston Bruins. Um, you know, a defenseman is something they might target when it comes to a Jake DeBrusque trade, but I am still uh, keen on acquiring a second line center or someone who can play center to add some depth at that position. Uh, and, you know, I've been banging the Dylan Strom drum for quite some time. And I do think a DeBrusque for Strom trade makes a lot of sense, more so than LeBanc, uh, considering 
Uh, Strom is uh, comes in at a lesser cap hit and uh, can play a position that the Bruins really do need. He will be a restricted free agent at the end of the season. Uh, wouldn't be due for a massive raise. And uh, I think he has more upside than a guy like LeBanc, you know, drafted third overall in 2015. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that would be a better trade for the Boston Bruins. Okay, a couple more questions here just to end. This is from Daryl Ingram at Ingram Daryl 31. Do you see John Beecher turning pro this season? I haven't really uh, checked in on Beecher lately. I know he's had ups and downs when it comes to uh, injuries, had shoulder surgery last season. Um, and so far this year, it's, uh, you know, he's off to a decent start with the uh, Michigan Wolverines. I believe he has, um, yeah, two goals, two assists through 10 games. Um, I could see him possibly finishing his uh, university career this season, jumping up to the Providence Bruins, but he might be a four-year guy at Michigan and uh, could really use that development. I don't think we'll see him up in Boston uh, anytime soon. Finally, Mike B at MDB82. With Marshan coming back and how LaCoyle Smith seeming to mesh, what do they do with Taylor Hall? Yeah, I'd love to see that new look second line stay together. They've been playing pretty well. And again, this is where a center would come in handy. If you could put Hall with a Strom per se, and then, I don't know, even Steen on the second line or, or Karsten Kuhlman, uh, then that Hall LaCoyle Smith would be just a, a potentially deadly third line for the Boston Bruins. And that's, again, why I kind of think they should go for uh, a center uh, in, a, in a Jake DeBrusque trade or, or any kind of trade, really, to, to shore up uh, that position of need for sure. Thank you so much for sending in some mailbag questions. It's been a while since uh, I got hit with so many. I really do appreciate uh, you sending those in, interacting uh, with uh, with the pod in that fashion, and uh, hopefully I was able to give some uh, sufficient answers. Now, uh, big, ner- big news yesterday was the suspension to Jason Spezza, uh, six games for kneeing. Uh, Neil Pionk of the Winnipeg Jets, uh, which I think is pretty uh, pretty fair considering, uh, you know, the NHL called it reckless and retaliatory, which it was. I know the refs kind of let that game get out of hand, but there's still no place for that uh, kind of action in the NHL. Spezza, I believe, is intent on appealing it, seeing as he has no previous uh, disciplinary action lowered upon him. Uh, So we'll see if the NHL reduces uh, that that sentence. The Capitals have canceled their practice today, being extra cautious with three players landing in uh, COVID protocol recently. And uh, hopefully there's no more outbreaks around the NHL. And uh, finally, one possibly tantalizing name on the waiver wire. Uh, Riley Nash, former Bruin, was claimed yesterday by the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, So the Bruins let him pass through. He was grabbed by the Lightning. Uh, Brandon Perlini, who was drafted 12th overall by Arizona in 2014. He was put on waivers by the Uh, Edmonton Oilers yesterday, zero points through 13 games so far this season. He did score 17 goals in his second season with the Coyotes back in 2017-2018. Another left-hand shot, so maybe not wanting to add there, but, uh, you know, it could be a guy that could fill in a role that was or is going to be vacated by Jake DeBrusque. You add Perlini on the side, make a DeBrusque deal to meet another need, and uh, it's kind of a bonus there. So we'll see if uh, Don Sweeney puts in a claim. Uh, Be easy for 
Perlini to join the team since the Bruins are out in Western Canada at the moment and playing in Edmonton uh, tomorrow night. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. I hope you're all having a great week. And tomorrow on the podcast, I am scheduled to uh, be joined by a very special guest. You're not going to want to miss this one. Don't want to jinx it or spoil it and just hope everything goes okay with the recording process. But uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Uh, Definitely. A quick show recommendation. If you are looking for something non-hockey to watch, uh, many of you may know that I'm a big historical fiction uh, fan. And uh, my wife and I have been watching The Great on Amazon Prime with uh, Elle Fanning, Nicholas Holt. It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek, satirical look at uh, Peter the Great. No, Peter the Great's son the emperor of Russia back in the 1700s and Catherine, his wife, uh, really hilarious. Uh, and yeah, just, uh, pretty entertaining to watch. So if you're looking for something, I do recommend that. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for making it your first listen today. I recommend making locked on bets. Your second listen of the day, uh, daily picks, everything you need for your gambling needs hosted by your boy Q and Lee Sterling, free and available on all platforms. And we'll be back tomorrow to discuss uh, tonight's game against the Vancouver Canucks, uh, Bruce Boudreaux's second game behind the bench for Vancouver, and uh, also special guest interview tomorrow as well that you're not going to want to miss here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care, friends.